everyone. Happy Sunday. How are you all doing? I hope well, and I hope you guys are excited to keep working on a little robot hero. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Leticia Gillett. And um, I'm, um, well, we're going to be streaming here um, every Sunday, 1 p.m., as you all know, probably. And this uh, stream is sponsored by Lenovo. Thank you, Lenovo. And the archetype we've been working for the past two weeks, I want to say two to three weeks. Can't remember. Hi, Daria. Hi, Jace. Hi, Kund. Gregory, hi, nice to see you all. And we're working on the hero um, archetype. And our hero character is a little, a little robot made by the actual hero, right? But the robot itself is also a hero. So we're working on that. And his name is Sid. And uh, this week, I asked my husband to help me do some texturing work. So while he was while he was texturing, I was doing the poses for the character. So for those of you who don't know, my husband is also a character artist. And if you're interested in checking out his work, uh, I'll put the link here. Just clean my glasses here. Let me get his link so you all can see. I get the art station one. So, and he helped me, like I said, uh, doing the textures for the robot while I was doing some poses. So the link is gonna go here. Send it on the chat. All right. So let's check it out. What's going on with our character? I'm gonna share my screen. All right. So this is our boy Sid. And like I said, Chris did some of the texture work for me. And then um, I was worrying, uh, doing some poses. So let's check it out what's going on. So this is our heroic pose because he is our hero. So he needed a heroic pose. So let me let it uh, sit and render a little bit so you all can see. So remember we split the lag in half. That's for it. So he can kind of like, I'll show the other action pose. So this is Sid right here. And again, his name is Sid is a play with words with seed, which seed like the, the seed where you plant and a plant comes out, right? Uh, but then I put Sid and um, yeah, so that's the play of words. Oh, I'm not showing, I'm sorry. Thank you for letting me know. Here we go. <laughs> I was talking without you guys seeing it. So here is Seed, our character. And is it working now? Can you guys see it? Let me know if you can see it. So this is how Hero Pose with Seed. And uh, I did the leg split here. Yay, thank you. So uh, he, he or she or it could spread his legs and, and be more stable and do different kinds of poses. So uh, this is the texture packs, but we can uh, maybe today we can try to like do some variations of color. I did one variation yesterday with the file that my husband gave me just to play around. So I did this version. Um, thank you, Daria. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so this is when he has the legs combined together and then just kind of look humanoid, you know. And I can show, let me select something here. I can show a little bit around uh, what happens in the back. Ugh. Let me let it render a little. So that's what's going on in the back. And then the the name of the company that builds this robots, I, I name it Invitobots. And uh, so I put we put it here, the, the little name, Envirobots. 
And this is the 008 variation of the robot. So imagine there was some other variations like series, let's say. So that's uh, another pose that we made. And then back here, we have, let me frame it. We have the action pose when he is, you know, going around, putting fires out or, um, you know, helping animals. And he does all kinds of stuff to help the environment. So that's the, when his legs is full on uh, spider mode. And then this hands comes out and then there's this hose that puts water away. I never liked what I did with this hose thing, but whatever. I had to finish, so. So, yeah. So that's Sid in uh, action pose. And then here is Sid uh, showing the new creation, which is a Sid toy for kids, because he's a hero. So I, we would imagine that kids would want to have a toy, a Sid toy. So Sid is just in love with his own version of himself as a toy. <laughs> cool, right? And uh, I made one more pose that is just Sid here. Let me show it. He is catching it. <laughs> so this two, they're just like geeking about the Sid toy and he's holding his heart. So uh, one thing I thought is that he's, um, let me open my Epic Pen so I can draw on top. So you see this little sphere here, um, this little circle. So this is actually a little thing full of seeds. And he takes it out and, and everywhere he goes, he starts planting stuff depending on the environment and what kind of plants thrive on that environment. So this is kind of like his heart, you know, because it's where all the seeds are there so he can go around planting them. So on this pose, he's like touching the little toy and holding his heart because he's so emotional because he has a, a toy version of himself. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's where uh, Sid's heart goes, where the seeds are. And that's that, you know, like uh, we can play around with some lighting today. And like I said, we can do some uh, texture variations on it. I can show you guys if you're interested, like on the Maya file, I, I did not do a rig, but I did do like a, a group system where I can pose everything by group, which is nice in Maya. And you can do that in other softwares as well. So if you want, I can show you. Do you like that story, Darren? Yeah, they're like, oh my God, this is so cute. Something like that. So this is the Marmosoft, kind of like a very basic lighting setup just to kind of like present the model. But um, I don't know yet what kind of final image I'm going to make, but... Uh, that's kind of it. So I can show you guys how I, I did the Maya file to pose it. I think that would be cool to show. So let me put this here. One thing also that I think is important to mention is that when I was kind of like imagining that I was almost done with the robot, I took some screenshots and then I take notes of things that I want to uh, change. This is very important to keep you on track, you know. Like when you get to a point where you're like, what else do I need to do? You kind of take some screenshots, you start taking notes to what you want to continue doing. That is very helpful for my brain because the next day I'm kind of like, I just need to look at my notes and then continue what I have to do, you know? So as you can see here, for example, like it says rubber because the metal, um, normally it's it's nice when you have a metal piece and then you have a rubber to kind of buffer any impact that the metal could have, for example, on, the, on his pipes. So if you look at here, there's no rubber yet, but if we go back to the model, let me show you what I did. I model a little, um, zoom in, a little rubber pad. So you can see here, this is very cool. It's something I learned when I was working on Overwatch. Um, you always have a metal plate and then you put a little rubber padding. 
and it creates some visual interest. It also makes it the inside darker. You don't want to see the insides of the metal plate, you know. So they put rubber on all the metal stuff, like including if we go here to his high pose. I mean, you can see. Ah, you can see here very easily because it's on the light now. But you can see this is metal, and then you have rubber, and then you have the pipes, you know. So it kind of protects whatever is inside from from anything. Cool. All right. So let's go to Maya. And if you guys have any questions about anything, like I saw someone, Jay said, if there are a tutorial, you could point me to create those digital eyes. This is just, um, um, well, my husband textured that, but these are just, um, he put a, a texture of like, black and white where you see here is just a black and white mask with square so like this is black so it's not going to show right and then all this area black black is like a grid and then the squares are white and then you just paint the squares that you want to show and everything else is black you know i can show that on a on a substance file can't help to imagine the post-apocalyptic version of this all rusted and stuff. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be a cool thing to do when, like, something happened with the world. Even though he's trying to help the environment on a, like, sad scenario, it's not enough. And then it's just him and the environment. No more humans. And, yeah, that could be cool. All right, so let me go to Maya here. All right, so in Maya, let me hide this one. What I have is now this one, I think is this one. Yeah, so let me duplicate. All right. So in Maya, what I had was this, right? But there's no rig. Daria said, were you like an art director for the texturing or your husband did how he wanted? No, he did what he wanted. And then, you know, when he was done, I just kind of like Let's put a logo here and there, but he basically did it all. And then uh, I just uh, took his file and did this other variation of color here. We can make other variations, but he did it all. I did not do anything on the touch screen. All right, so going back here, the way I did to, um, to pose it, Here's what I did, okay? So I used groups in Maya to create uh, different points of pivoting to be able to pose it. So for example, for the arm, if I go up here, I have a group that the pivot is on the ball joint of the arm. So you can see here, booby, booby, right? And then if I go to the um, lower arm, I have another pivot where it's supposed to rotate like this. And this is all done by grouping. And then let's say I do this, right? And now I have, if I go to the hand and I go to the group, another group here, and I can rotate like this. And it's all a group inside a group inside a group to create this rig. And then if you go to the finger, I have one for the finger, you see? So I, I got lazy and I didn't want to do for uh, the tip of the finger. So that part, I just posted by hand inside the, the object itself. Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. So this is kind of like what I did for the arm rig. So again, like if I want to rotate, it's kind of like that, right? Say hi. And then I have one for um, um, one for the pelvis, for example that I can rotate the pelvis like this, right? And then the cool one is for the legs because I separate the legs like this. So I could pose the legs all together, have one group for that. Or if I want to separate the parts separately like this, I can as well, like this, right? And same thing, if I go to the uh, this part and then I go to the group, I can do any poses with it you see so that's how i did the rig for it 
And even for the foot, I have the pivot point where I want, where I could do whatever I want with the foot. Um, so again, like this is all like grouping and putting the pivot point where I want the rotation to happen, right? So it's no rig, it's just group with pivot points. That's it. That is the laziest rig, but it works very well for robots, right? Because there, there's no deformation, meaning like you don't need to have smooth transitions for things. So with that done, we can see, I'm gonna show all the poses I did here. So I have uh, the action pose, which is this one, right? And then I have the hero pose, you can see here. And that's all posed the way I showed, you know. And then we have um, this pose that he's presenting his toy version of himself. I have here the pose where he's touching and holding his heart. And then we have Les Bonalis, the high pose. And this is all from this group, which is the default. And then again, like I just took my time to make all the grouping and put the put the pivot point where I want it. And then you just can pose him doing whatever, you know. If there's any pose you guys want to do together, or if if let me know in the chat if you want to do some texturing or we can play with lights and stuff. Uh, or we can make a new pose, I don't know, something. But yeah, that's how I did all the posing for it. Again, no rig, it's just, oh yeah. And inside his belly, if I put pull down here, his pelvis, I have the little piece here, right? That I could, um, scale and i could use also let's say like it's gonna be stretch right and then i can put a bend a bend the deformer so if you go to and the all softwares have a bend deformer so if you go to deform nonlinear and you put bend then you can uh go to the settings of that and you can do like he's moving on the side we can do like this so he's like tilting his pelvis or if he's uh, tilting to the back we can just rotate the bend handle here and again we can do going forward or backwards like this so that's kind of how i deal, dealt with his uh, tummy area we go back thank you dracula <laughs> Dracula said, I love your work. Thank you so much. <laughs> and have fun. That's what is important. <laughs> yeah, so this is kind of it. And um, here in the back, he has a little seed. That's kind of like the, the logo. And again, like in Virobots. And on the front, his name is Seed, which is a play with the word Seed itself. Cool. So that's basically it. So in Maya, really, the only thing I did was to bring to Maya, and I, I think I modeled some of those rubbers here in Maya, and then again, like just made the whole rig structure so I could do a bunch of different poses. Um, Jace, you can ask a question. Uh, you know, if I can answer, I'll answer for sure. Uh, if it's something specific, I might not be able to answer, but yes. <laughs> You can ask your question about Overwatch. Um, so let me open here again. Here we go. So that's kind of how I did the rig for the poses, which is fun. And I don't know. I feel like I, there's so many other po cool poses that we could do it with him. Um, and I love the spread legs on the hero pose because it creates that very so much like stable you know because uh what we call it in design right when we do a triangle like this on the base we this is a stable shape where the invert version of it right of a triangle like this is uh, unstable right so he feels very stable like this but he also feels like uh a hero he has that kind of like triangular down shape like this 
which makes basically a little star shape like so. Um, oh, the game engine is proprietary, Jace. So they develop a specific game engine for Overwatch. So it's it's a Blizzard engine that they use on Overwatch. So it's not uh, anything that we have in the market. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where where I am right now with them. And I, again, like, I don't know what kind of final image I'm going to make. I don't know if we're just going to make a bunch of different poses of different images. I was trying at some point something like this where, let me hide that guy and let me hide this guy. I was trying to see if I could do something that looks like, like this, you know, some, like, overlaps going on where we have the hero and then we have this guy saying hi and him in transform mode and then this guy in the back so, some image like this um but i don't know i don't know if you guys have any any cool ideas of what what we should do as a final image doesn't need to be only one you know i think i'm gonna do more than one to kind of present all of them together um yeah how many light sources do you use? Do you usually use in your rendering scenes? Well, that's a good question. So if we go here, normally, normally, okay, I use at least three lights. So I'm gonna turn off all the lights here just to show. Turn this one off, turn this one off. Okay, so. This is like completely black, right? So the, their eyes are glowing because it has a missive material on it, but it's completely black. So always, always I use a sky dome, which is a HGRI, right? So this is the image we're using here is very diffuse, which is nice because we want to diffuse lighting on the robot. So this is called HDRI. And this is a high dynamic range image. And what it does is the pixels are beyond the value of one. That means that they emit light. They, they store high dynamic range. So uh, this white here, it might be a value of 10. is like emitting light, you know? So if I turn on that light now, you can see what's going to happen. It's very diffuse uniform lighting because the sky is kind of like on a overcast feeling and you can see that it creates like an ambient lighting feel to it so i normally like to use hgris let me hgris as ambient i think that's how you write right uh and then i create a a key light which doesn't have a name here, but let's name it so it looks good. So I'm gonna call it key light. The key light will be like the sun or your main light if you inside, right? So if I turn off the AGRI, I'm gonna turn on my key light and you're gonna see that the key light is very intense and, and uh, strong, right? It's, a, it's an important light, it's your main light. You can notice that it's almost like if you like, oh, this is doing pretty good. You don't need GHGRI, but check out the shadows, how dark they feel. When we turn on the AGRI, those shadows gets a bit softer because they're going to make a feeling of bounce light, you know, more ambient feel light. And then I have an extra light here, which is doing this. It's like a side light, basically, to give a little bit of volume to things. It's not doing much, actually, so we might not even need it. So, But I, sometimes I like to put a backlight to kind of create a little silhouette on the characters. But on this scene, like it seems like I only need those two lights, to be honest. I only need my ambient light and my key light. And because my ambient light is very diffuse, it, it's very nice, you see. It's like... It, it feels the ambient. And if you feel that your shadows are too dark still, 
you just need to pump it up the uh, the skylight right like if i right now the values are one if i start bringing up 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 you're gonna see that that skylight is gonna start blooming everything because if i turn off my main light you can see how strong it is so i like to use the skylight very um very little because that's not my main lights it's just a few imagine a global few light so i put the value of one and then i'm going to turn on my main light boom there we have it cool is that um is that clear but like i said sometimes what i like to do like the formula let's call it <laughs> it's not a formula because you gotta you know Think about every character, every story needs a different lighting. But on this one, because I'm doing a lighting for presentation, we have a skylight, right? Sky, which is sending rays everywhere. It creates that kind of like ambient, ambient vibe. And then we have our main light. I'm gonna put a little sun here, right? with the direction which is high intensity high intensity and uh um, the, you can see more the design of the shadows right it's a let's call sharp shadows but i wouldn't say sharp because it's still very diffuse but it's the skylight if i turn off my my key light you will see that the shadows are super 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 diffuse in this case we have, a, yeah, instead of saying sharp, I'm going to say directional light. You know, shadow. Cool. And we can put colors. I don't think I put any colors in the lights, but you could. But again, I'm trying to do a very uh, clear um, showroom sort of thing where you can really see all the shapes of your model. Cool. Awesome. Any other questions about the lighting? If you guys have any questions there. Um, yeah, I think those are uh, the lighting stuff. And um, yes, yeah, very informative. Thanks a lot. We we'll use your advice in my future renders. Yeah, it's, it's like you can go simple, you know, because it's, it's it's tempting to start adding lights to make something look good. But what I learned with lights is that the simpler, the better, like really go light by light, very slow and kind of like understanding what each light is doing. And you're going to notice that you don't need a lot of light, especially when you have ray trace on. Because ray trace is gonna bounce that light everywhere. It's gonna fill the room uh, with with light and color for your characters. Cool. All right. So, uh, oh yeah. So if I open here the other high seed here, you can see that I was testing some different colors um, for it. Uh, I was thinking maybe we could do on the stream like a metallic version of it or I don't know if you guys have any ideas. One thing, to, one cool thing to do uh, is to find a color palette. So I'm going to go here. So remember the Adobe color that I show you guys, like the website where you can get different colors. Um, so if you go up here on trend, trendy, you're going to see that they're going to show some little images with the palette of that image, you see. So there's a bunch of different images, again, with the main five color palette. We don't need to use the five color, but it's a nice way to like, oh, how, how would Sid feel with this color palette, you know? So that could be cool. Uh, we could try a very... Um, We'll try a metallic version. I'm just thinking if there's any color palette that he will look good in metal. Like this kind of like would be interesting if we made it the body metal or something. I really liked this color here. It's very happy. 
we can try that one as well. Yeah, this one is quite beautiful. It's going to make a more serious seed for us. So we might try that. Again, I'm not going to use like exactly the five colors. We might, but it's not necessary. Like I like to think of it. If I can do anything using three colors, I'm happy because I'm, I'm don't I'm not, I don't go along with colors very well. So uh, look at this, how beautiful. And it's not just about getting the color palette. Okay. But if I click here, I just want to show one thing. Look at this image. Okay. Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, let's study this image. Okay, this image has all these colors, right? Great. But look at the percentage of those colors in the image. We can see that this color and this color, we could say that it's about 70% of the image is this two color, right? And then we have this other two colors that are very close to each other. And then we see here little pieces of it here. The, the clock itself, not clock, the compass itself has those colors. So we could say that, that those two colors are about 25% of the image. And then we have this little bits of red here on the compass, which is this color. And we could see that's about 5% of the image. So this percentage is not just about the colors again. It's also about the percentage. Why? Because this percentage of colors create the most beautiful, important word on the planet. No, I'm just, but it's my favorite word in art, which is called contrast. Okay. So it's not just about, oh, I have these colors and I'm just going to keep painting without thinking. You got to think about contrast. How can you create variations on those colors so you can create visual contrast? And this image here does it beautifully. It's like amazing. So maybe let's try this palette and see if we can follow this image, uh, this image uh, rules and see what we can get. Okay. So, all right. So I'm going to copy this here. I don't know if I can copy this image. Whoops, what did I do? Go back. No. Let me try this again. It'll be color, trends. Oh, it's because I have it huge. All right, let's try that one. So again, download this JPEG. Let me download this. Oh, you cannot. Never mind. All right, so I'm going to do... So I'm going to click here. And I'm going to take a snapshot of this so we can have it. Take a snapshot. I'm going to copy to my peer rep here. So we can test it out. Okay. And we're going to try to mimic exactly what the image did. Those 70, 25, and 5%. All right. So let's go to Substance Painter. And on this one, I have, I'm going to open the original actually. So let me get the original, which is this guy. And we're going to start from there. All right. So. I'm just going to save as just to make sure I don't overwrite anything. So I'm going to call this um, test color two. All right. So now that we have that here, let me just make this a bit smaller here. Okay. So this is the original scene. It's great. So let's think about this, right? Let's go with calm and care. So. If we think about this, we know that those two blues are 70% of our image, right? If we look at here. So what we could do is to make the white, the dark blue, and then maybe some other blues, the light blue, or the opposite. Uh, let's try to make the light blue overall, and then the dark blue on this purple areas here. So 
if I go to his body, turn off the glass here, go to his body uh, texture set, and here's the whole structure of his body. So if I go to the materials, and my husband is very good at organizing stuff, thankfully, so it's very easy to use his files. That's why it's important and appreciated to be organized because you never know who's going to have to use your files if you're working in a company or someplace or doing a project together with a friend. So this is love, you see? This is love. All right. So on the white one, just the white here, we're going to open the folder and we're going to go to the base color. And instead of white, I'm going to get my teardrop here and I'm going to put the light blue. Boom. And it's calculating down here. It's going to show up just in a second. Okay. Why is it taking so long? <laughs> we'll get there. All right. Now we got that blue. See? All right, so we got to think about again, like now most of my, my robot is that blue. Great. Now I'm going to add a little accents like with this purple lines, for example, or the purple fingers, and we're going to add the other blue, right? So I'm going to go to that folder, now, which is the what called light like, purple. I'm going to go to the base, pick my my ear uh, tear drop, drop here, boop. And all purples will change to that other color. That is great, right? So now, what are the other colors we need? We have this two kind of like earth, earth yellow, orangey colors. So we can play with both of them, right? But uh, thinking about looking at the image here, the light one seems like it's a bit more evident. This light one, but Let's test it out. Instead of the orange, let's test the um, the light color here. So I'm gonna go to the folder and that is called orange. Yeah, of course, Jesu. Um, I'm gonna go to the base, pick the color, and we're gonna try the light one and see what happens. So now my oranges are all light. Not bad. We can try the other color. Let's just try it since we're here. That one feels more interesting. Okay. And we can change some stuff to be a different color, but I want to try to keep it simple without having to change too much. So instead of this blue rings here, okay, maybe we got to think about what is going to be our red. Maybe the red is going to be the leaf on his head. Maybe his eyes are red. That could be cool as well. And maybe this green circles could be red. Let's just see our image again. So it's very little sprinkles of red. So we got to be careful. We just want some going around. So I'm going to keep his body kind of like on that nude color. So let's try to add that yellow to the other pieces. I'm going to go to the, I think it's the cyan. And the base color, let's try the light nude. So you can see the light nude going on here. See what's going on. Like this. Okay. We could potentially propagate some of that dark blue somewhere, but uh, we could keep that dark blue even on this greens here. Let's try that. So I'm going to go to the green folder and I'm going to put the dark blue again. So it's going to be this one. You can see the, the blues going around. Yep, rubbers. I think that's working pretty well. And uh, yeah, let's try to put the red on the leaf and maybe on the eye. So all the red's going to be on his head. Um, Oh yeah, we still have the orange on for the decals. So maybe the decals can still be this this dark blue as well. So let's do that. I'm gonna go here and on the decal stuff. Let me find it. You see, this is love. 
Uh, where are the defects? Glass, black steel, cyan. I think it's... Where is it? Maybe it's this one? Let me see. No. Logos? Oh, it's called logo. Okay. So the logos are going to do... Yes, thank you. <laughs> My husband is here. And he said it's under logos. <laughs> So I'm going to go to the logos here, and I'm going to get the orange one. And again, with my eardrop, I'm just going to put that color in. Right, so he's getting more serious and, you know, more earthy, which is nice. And we can change other logos as well, like, for example, his name, the series on white. We could potentially do the same thing, just to kind of change it. So let me go here. We get the color. Put the element. Beautiful. Sit. And then the red tone that we have here is a very bright red. We're going to put on the um, leafy. And uh, Chris is here, my husband. And I was telling everyone, Chris, how, how important it is to do what you did here how important it is to be organized. This is so appreciated when you're working in production and you have someone with this level of care to really know that it's not just about you. You're working in a production and that means that some other people in the future might have to open your file and adjust things. And this is called love, this is called care. It's thinking about the next person, you know? So. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so now let's try to change the leaf to red, see what happens. So the leaf is on the head texture sheet. So I'm gonna change here to the, to the set for the head. And then let me see here. We don't need this. We're gonna go to the uh, base color, I think, which I'm gonna put the red color in. And yep, the leaf is red now. Wow, this is pretty interesting. And maybe we could make um, the eyes red as well. So um, on the eyes, actually, I can change the color in my own set. So we're just going to keep the leaf red and see what happens. Uh, so let's test it out. Let's see if this color palette looks cool and fun. I don't know, is this with the right color? I think it's like a white tone right now. Let me just double check. So on the body, I want this torus here to be the same color as this one. So let me go back here and uh, that called the green one, I think. One second. Yep. No, it's not. Is it the same? Let me see. Yeah. Just the mask now. You see, oh, that is in the. Maybe there's something else on top of it, overriding. No, I guess it's just delaying. Okay, so we have that now. And uh, it's a very interesting set. It has some nice support. It's a different this color. It looks like a robot closet. It looks like a robot that would be in a hospital or it's just me. Yeah, it's really good again. He would be like doing something or some fire on him. On his head. <laughs> so let's export some textures and uh, just gonna make sure I don't overwrite any of my textures. So I'm gonna create a new um, folder here. Marma said it's gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this a uh, hospital bot. <laughs> this Claudia said he works in the hospital. I'm gonna call hospital bot and select that and I'm gonna export. 
It's gonna book, 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 book. So I export everything. Now we're gonna go to Marmoset and do some changes. Okay. So for a hospital bot, uh, I'm just gonna use the same same robot here saying hi. I'm just gonna duplicate and then we're gonna plug some new textures. So I'm gonna duplicate this guy, push it down to the side here. We can create the color variations. Hmm. Have problem with the audio? Is it better now? Yeah, I think the computer is suffering with substance and all the stuff I have open. It's better now? Okay, cool. All right, good. So I have my robot here, but I want to uh, do a color pass, right? So I'm going to get my textures and I'm going to duplicate so I can apply new textures. And this guy's going to be the hospital. Hospital. Material. And now let's just change the colors and see what happens. Cool. So I'm going to go to my textures and I'm going to get the hospital. Where is it? I think I put in substance folder. No. Textures, color var. What did I say? Oh, I saved it here. OK, so I'm going to put the color on the body going to see that's going to change, but I need to assign first. So what I'm going to do here is, where is it? Hospital material. I need to assign to my robot. So it's going to change the head for a bit, but the body is there. Okay. And now we're going to have to change the materials on the head. So I'm going to put the glass back on. on the chip. And now I'm going to open my structure and find the head to apply the head material. And for the head material, because we're going to change the color of the eyes to red as well, might not work well for the hospital, but let's try it. So I'm going to duplicate um, this ma the head material so we can test it out. So I dupe it. I'm going to call it hospital head, hospital head. Okay, and then now I can plug to the head. Head geo here. Doop. Okay, so now we can just change the colors on this, and then I'm going to change the color on the leaf. And it's still green, but we're going to have to change uh, in here the albedo color. So, head color. Here we go. So we have that now here. And then inside here, the eyes, oops, I kept the, let me just do one thing. I kept the eyes on here. I did that last night too. The heart. So let me close that. Where is it? On the head. Trying to find it here. What did, what did I put? Okay. Oh, it's in here? No. Gradient, maybe? No. Can find it. Screen. Here we go. It's the screen. So I'm going to just turn off that screen because I already have the alphas on. So let me export the textures again. Export. Do 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 do. Close. And now it goes away. So now we can change the color on the glow because what Chris did on the texture for me was he made alpha. See? It's alpha. And then I control the color inside Marmoset with the emissive color. So now if I go to the emissive color, I can pick that red that we chose. And now his eyes are red. Check it out. Kind of pink, but. Yeah, do I love it? No, but it's a color variation. You see, so when you when you work organized like what what Chris did, 
the cool thing is that it, it's, it's easy enough to do any changes. Like if we want the eyes to be blue for the hospital, right? Or maybe cyan, that could be cool. And then only his, his re, uh, hair is going to be red, you know, um, that's cool. So I think I'm going to keep it this, this cyan color, like bright cyan. I think that works better. And we could make his hair a little less pointy, just a bit more open, like friendly like this. And now we have a hospital version of, of a robot. <laughs> what do you guys think? Yeah, blue looks nice on the eyes. Might go just a bit greenish blue. Let me try. Maybe greenish. Yeah, like that. That's cool. Let's see. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, so this guy, you know, he works in the hospital. This one, I don't know where he could work construction. <laughs> so, you know, we can make our, our SID bots for function. Like, where do they work? You know, the important thing here to remember is those rules of colors, which is not a rule per se. I don't want to call it a rule, but it's, it's nice to think about contrast with colors, right? And our ratio of colors here, we have this two-tone which is about 70%. And then we have these two tones here, this and this, which is about 25% or maybe 20, maybe here's 75. But then we have our accent color. We call it accent, which is about 5%. In this case, maybe even a bit less. Visually is about 5%. And, and then we get that sort of a thing going on, right? So think about that. That is a way to play with contrast color. And if you go again to that website here, if we go back to the trends, you're going to notice that kind of contrast going on in most images. You're going to notice that there is a level of uh, contrast on the tones, and that's why it makes those images so interesting, you know? So study, study that stuff. Think about not just the color. Oh, I love this color. No, but think about the ratio of the colors being used on the image reference that you're looking at it. Okay. If anything today to learn is this, what I just said. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. So let me save my substance file. Yeah, of course. No worries, Dracula. Well, let me get, uh, where's my substance? Oh, here we go. I'm just gonna save this version here for us. It's pretty cool changing the color changes all his backstory. Yes, that's right. And and again, like I'm just changing color. I'm not adding anything else. Uh, we could try to make a me metallic version of him. Like I said, like, cause right now he's all like, kind of like that plastic industrial metal painted thing. We could try to make one like, I don't know, like Sid, Sid goes to the Oscars. He's all gold or something. I don't know. We could play with that as well. If you guys want to see me keep painting Sid, that's fine. I can keep going. Um, it's very fun. Um, we can make some different eye shapes as well. Like right now he has... Um, this eye shape, which is he's in love. Then we have a more focused, call it focused. Then we have love. And this is all my husband did for me. And this one is kind of like the hero eyes, kind of like, you know. And here we got the, the kind of happy eyes. So we can think about maybe hospital Sid can have like, something else on his eyes or something i don't know or oscar sid could have like a star on his eyes or something like that so we can test it out if you guys want to keep seeing that uh if not put any questions in the chat that so we can talk about it um you know and while you okay so signor said would it be difficult to add tear tear and wear effect, something like rust in the crevices. 
difficult, you know, you can do it in substance pretty, pretty easily. You know, we just need to create new layers and start adding like some procedural dust or, or rust and things like that. We can try to do that. Yeah, we can try to do a more, since the texture artist is my husband, not me, I'm going to force him to do a, a rusty version maybe of Sid. And then I can show it to you all next Sunday. <laughs> that could be cool. Um, James Bond in tuxedo and eyeglasses. Oh my God, eyeglasses would be cool to have a, a one that, oh, uh, that would be cool. We can think about a pose, like a James Bond pose as well. Uh, but look at this, how, how different the colors change the whole vibe of, of Sid, right? And here he has the other eyes. So if we want to keep the same happy eyes, kind of like friendly hospital guy, we can just go to the thing. And because Chris made all the alphas for the eyes, let me get here. So I can get the happy face. Here we go. And now he has the happy face. Yes. What to help. Cool. Um, do you guys have any, any questions? Put it on the chat. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what kind of image I'm going to make. We can think about a color for the, for the hero pose as well. But this is all very, very fun to just keep changing colors. I just want to keep doing that. But um, if you have any questions, put it on a chat. On the attack version down back here, action pun. Dracula had a, a one about translucency. Well, well, let me see if I lost it. If you want to make something translucent, is it in the lighting or texture? Exact is actually Dracula on the shader. Okay. So if you want a skin shader on something, okay, let's put a skin shader on Sid. It's gonna look very weird, but just for the purpose of explanation. So I'm gonna duplicate Sid here. Let me make a copy of him. Boop. So the translucency is gonna be done on the properties of your shader, okay? So I'm gonna make a new shader and I'm gonna call it uh, skin, for example, okay? And I'm gonna assign the shader to our sit guy here. Oop. Let me turn off the other seeds just so if it's easier to render stuff here. All right, so let's zoom in on sit here. So now he has this basic material that's not translucent yet, obviously, right? And let's put a, just for fun, let's put a flashy color <laughs> just so we can make a flashy seed. So I'm going to put a little bit of yellow to the color, kind of like this. Still not translucent, right? Because you've got to go to the transmission. This is in Marmoset. Every software has a different name for, for where they're supposed to be. The transmission is how the light uh, penetrates an object. So we have solid, right? So if I type it here, let, let, we have an object that is solid. So the ray of light hits and bounces out. Then we have something translucent, which has layers, right? And then the ray sometimes penetrates that first layer and then bounces out back, or sometimes it doesn't come back. It, it penetrates and it bounces inside itself until the ray of color kind of dies. So let's say that this went in 100% of intensity, and then it bounced here, it became 70%, it bounced in again 50, and then I don't know, 30, and then zero. And then we have transparent, which is the ray right? This is, let's say, like a glass, piece of glass. The ray goes through, but because of the IOR, which is the bending factor, it comes out in a different way, creating a different reflection, right? So we have here solid, translucent, and transparent, okay? So what we're going to do here, 
we're going to put some SSS, which we call SSS subsurface scatter, which is the scatter of the subsurface of the skin. So in the transmission here, I'm going to go and going to say we have two types of skin uh, of scatter here. We have subsurface scatter and we have volumetric scatter. Volumetric scatter is the physical, physically based correct in marmoset, which is going to behave like the light would. So I'm going to choose volumetric and look what's going to happen with Sid. Okay. I'm going to click it. And now he looks a bit different, right? We don't know yet why, but he looks a bit different. You can see some red gathering around the borders of the plates here. That's nice to observe. But this is the scatter. It's set to one. Okay, it's how deep kind of like, not, not how deep, but yeah, it's how deep the light is going through the object trying to scatter, bounce the light. Let's put instead of one, I'm going to put 10. Look, he's getting flashy. Look at that bounce light inside, you see? Ooh, flashy Sid. Look at that. Very interesting, right? And you see those greens as well. This is, happens because it's, phys it's physically correct. So the light comes, we have RGB, red, green, and blue. And red has a longer, um, how do you call it? I forgot the word. Uh, spectrum of light is red is longer, green is a bit shorter, and blue is very short. So that means that the red, the red uh, um, color is going to penetrate more because it's, it bounces more. It's, it's a longer length of uh, spectrum, and that's why things tend to show more the red because of that or reddish, you know. And then you have some greens going through, as you can see. And then sometimes you get a little bit of blue here and there going on. So juicy. And then we let's put even more because I want to see you guys how it's going to look like a candle. So I'm going to put like, I don't know, 30. Let's see what happens. So now it's starting to really, really go through. You see that the green, the green spectrum is going through more because, again, like the, the red... The red photon is longer, and then green, let's put it red, green, blue. Green is a uh, uh, medium, and blue is shorter. So the the more scatter you put, the more green actually you're gonna start seeing going through stuff. And his head, because it's like solid, you see that there's no green going through basically, but the thinner bits are going through a bunch of green. Um, yeah, Marmoset's pretty good with um, SSS. Let's put now 60 and see what happens. Check it out. It's getting very waxy, right? It's getting like a lot like a candle. So look at how interesting, like this, this rings, they're very thin here. They're like becoming almost self-illuminated, like transparency feeling. Look at the fingers, like very much so like wax, you see? Because the light is really bouncing a ton inside and making it very, very bright. Look how cool. And if we put the texture in it, it's going to influence the color of the textures as well. Um, let me put a, any color here on the albedo just so we can see. Let's put the one that um, Chris painted. You can see with the colors what's going on, you see. You can barely even see the colors because the light is bouncing so much inside that it's more like the material itself is it's behaving more. I don't like the colors. Let's do it like this. Okay, so an uh, interesting thing is that we can change the color of the main, um, what the color you would expect to be the uh, important color, right? The permanent color. So right now is this kind of orangey, like a skin shader would be. But we could say, for example, it's going to be cyan and look at how, how it changes, you see? Uh, or we can try some green. It's always, it changes a lot. It's too much, see? You got some, some green going wrong. The thing is that the green is the main now, right? Then the, the purplish becomes the secondary color. That's why we're seeing so many purples here, which is the opposite color, right? 
um, if I go back down to like a value of like 20, for example, you, we're going to see some greens coming back. Let me put like 10. Three. Yeah, we start seeing more of that green going around. It's very nice skin shader in Marmoset. Uh, one interesting thing is to see, like, I'm going to go back to my orange color here. Here we go. And you can see the skin going around. And then if I put, like, a value of 40, okay, we're going to see those greens going around. So this is the volumetric scattering. But if we go to subsurface scattering, keep looking, it's going to change the effect. You see, the subsurface scattering is a bit more predictable how things happen. Um, it's very nice to use on cartoony stuff because it's a little more predictable. You can see more like a, a, very, a more uniform distribution of the colors where the volumetric respects a bit better um, the thick, sorry, the thickness of things. I got the hiccup. Um, cool. So normally for a human character, I like to use a value of like one or two, something like that to make it nice. What we could try as well is because subsurface is very much, uh, so you notice subsurface depending on where the light is, right? So we have a frontal light. So we're seeing kind of like, the bounce going on from the frontal light view. But if I rotate my model, you're gonna see that we have more intense reds going on on the shadows and stuff. That's because it's, it's being influenced by the backlight, right? In this case, the light isn't, it's coming from the back, right? Because I rotated. So if we turn off, for example, on the lighting, if we turn off the sky, you can see the bleed of the subsurface on the leaf up here on the head. You can see some going through here on the body. So if we put the high values again, like 20, we can see what's going on with the fingers, some of the thinner pieces. You start seeing the light bouncing inside and going through, you see? So that is very juicy and nice. So what people like to do a lot in characters is to do that on the and the ears, right? Because the ears on our body are the thinner parts that light goes through. So if we go here on my art station, if you go to this scene, for example, here, it's very subtle, but for this uh, fairy's ears, I put a little light in the back just to bring a little bit of life subsurface. Same thing here on the ear of the little creature here, see? We put a little light there just to kind of bring some of that uh, skin shader feeling. You can see on this one, this one, a lot on this one, and some here. So that's very nice. Any questions on that? Uh, I I've been read I haven't been reading the chat, so let me just see. Lucy, do do do. I use subsurface to make the ears of my characters red when backlit. Yeah, exactly. That's what, exactly. Your silhouettes are always so strong and pose so balanced. Oh, thank you, Jace. You know, you got to test it out a lot. I, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm the greatest at posing. I still feel like if I took the time to study some animation for poses, I would get better. But Yes, I'm always thinking about silhouette, you know, always think about the readability of the silhouette. So now we have our skin shader scene here. And if we wanted, since we're talking about materials, if we wanted to make a golden seed for the Oscars, right? Like without textures or anything, if we just want to make the shader, I'm going to make a new shader. I'm going to call this gold. Okay. And I'm going to get my gold shader. I'm going to apply here and I sit again. And for the gold, it's very easy to make metals in Marmoset. I think it's one of the easiest softwares to make shaders, in my opinion, is Marmoset. It's very nice and, and easy. So now we have that, right? 
And then I'm going to put a goldish color on it. And you got to be careful about metals uh, because sometimes like when, when I was studying uh, materials and stuff, you would put like a color like this, right? But normally metals actually the color are way more uh, desaturated and brighter. They're very up high, like on this spectrum of light here, instead of being more around here where I showed it. Because the metalness of the material is going to make it the color darker. You see what I'm talking about. So this is something important to keep in mind. Every time you're making a metal, if this is the color, let's say, uh, you want, you go way higher on the spectrum of that color. And when you make it metal, it's going to see that it's going to darken everything. Okay. So I'm going to put this color up here. Say like this. I'm just going to put a bit more of red on it. Yeah. And now, um, as dizzy as it is, you're just going to say there is a reflectivity area here and this metalness. If it's zero, it does not uh, conduct light, right? So it's like a plastic, any material that is not a metal. If it is one, it becomes a metal. And you can see how dark the color gets. Actually, I need way more yellow to be gold here. And you can see that even the color I chose might be too dark. I might have to go lighter on the color to get the, the yellow I want, the kind of Oscars yellow. Um, and that's really it. You have the color. Again, look at how bright the color needs to be to respect, right? And then we have the metalness. And obviously, as any metal, we need to play with the roughness. So if I make... Um, Less rough is going to be very reflective gold, like this. And if I increase the roughness, it's going to feel more like a brushed, brushed metal gold sort of thing. So for the Oscar, I think it's more reflective like this. Something like that. I don't know. He's ready for the Oscar. So we just need to put the screen here. That would be cool. Let's do that. I'm going to put the screen color on him. Where's the head? The head. I'm trying to find it here. Just put. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put the glass on the head, Gio. And then I'm going to put the. I'm going to make a new duplication of the material of the heart duplicate. I'm going to call this one Oscars. First, and then I'm going to put on his head. Doop. And there you go. His Sid is going to the Oscars. <laughs> he needs star eyes, yes. Um, how do you choose the right background color? You mean for, to present a character? Um, Jace, I, I always like to do... Um, what well, a mid gray um with a little tint of blue sometimes this scene chris set up for me so let me see what what he did let me let me see what color is in here uh, ee -oo. here we go yeah so he did exactly what i like to do as well which is kind of like a very bright with a little tint of blue background color uh, when I'm presenting things like at work or something like that, I like to use sort of like a mid gray. Um, you can see how it feels dark now because we got used to the to the light color. But mid gray is kind of nice because you know you're not tending to uh, uh, too bright or too dark. It's just in the center. But for characters, I like I like much more like a bright bright uh, bluish color. Bluish because it's kind of like gives that feeling of like the sky, a little bit of sky influence on it. And that's about it. <laughs> yeah, and we can make some star eyes uh, to put on him. So let's do that. And uh, Chris did a super nice setup for me on the, on the file for the eyes, which has this little grid here, you see. So someone was asking how, how I made the screen. So I didn't make it, so I cannot explain perfectly, but I know how to use it. The screen. So uh, I'm just going to get, for example, this eye shape here, which is the heart. 
And I'm just going to duplicate this folder. Duplicate. Let's see if I know what I'm doing. And then I'm going to go to, to the mask. Mask. Here we go. See? And then uh, we have some levels of, um, I think is this paint layer. So if I paint black, I'm going to remove, right? If I paint white, I'm going to create again some shapes. So let's make a star. And um, go here with a very small brush so I can choose how to paint. And I don't know if I know how to paint a star, but I think I do. So for now, I'm just going to block it out. And we can fix the little squares later. So I'm just going to block it out what, what a star would be. Just kind of like, oops, my voice cutting out. Let me know. Star like this. I don't know if I can good drawing, but we're going to fix the, the little square. It's going to look good, hopefully. All right. Let's see from far. If I put the stars too far apart, it might be a bit too far apart, but that's okay. We're just playing, playing around. So what I'm going to do now is try to make sure that I have the squares needed to make that star work. So here, I'm just going to make sure I paint the squares uh, on the mask. Oh, my computer is not liking streaming and painting at this time. I'm making a very bad star here, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. Some pixel art first. I'm just going to go with it. Don't judge me. And then we're going to figure it out. What we have to do <laughs> to fix it. <laughs> gonna be a very bad stars here <laughs> let me take this one <laughs> as you can see you need some love to make this uh, pixel art work here gotta play it a little better than I did but I have faith. I might look at a, how a star is in pixels and then it's easier to fix. Ghosts. <laughs> that looks great. <gasps> oh God. Okay. I'm gonna go let's see what we get with this uh and then we can fix it i'm just gonna fix it here and see from far it might be easier to judge looking at from far oops okay okay not too bad the tip here not too bad you might take this one out and then maybe i'll take this one out here okay and now I can make this one go like this. Okay, this one goes here. So this one, I'm gonna paint it out. And then I can paint this. And then this is gonna go straight like this. Oops. It's a very um, interesting um, star. He has one arm longer than the other here. Oh, Lord. Okay. okay so here's the center. <laughs> Looks like Patrick. Yeah, it's a fat star, I guess. Chubby. Chubby, chubby star. Okay, and then I'm going to take this one out. 
I need to make this one. Wait, this is in the center. So I need this guy here, right? And I need this arm all the way to go back here. So I need all this here and this stuff here. All right. I think the arms could be better. Maybe I can try to make the arms a little better. Let me see. I can make this go like this. Oops. That's a bit more like a star. So what did I do? I got out of the mask mode. It's okay. I do this one here. Pixar is hard. Yes, I agree. This was telling me, and I wasn't believing it, but now that I had to do it, I would agree that pixel art is very hard. Okay, so let me put some tips here. And uh, one here. No, I don't think he needs that top one. All right, so let's call it good. Let's pretend this is what we want. <laughs> it's Patrick. Uh, and now we're going to export this as a mask. So you can just go to the layer and right click and say um, on the mask, actually. And then I'm going to save it as a, as a mask. So if I go back here to my Nomen folder, textures and then we have face star oh hey how's it going velotix art <laughs> how are you doing i'm doing great thanks for joining us today we're making some different kinds of robots today um so okay so i'm gonna go to the here and easy just i'm gonna replace to the star, doop, and <laughs> right, not the best thing I've ever done, but it's not the worst. So we have Patrick's for eyes here for our um, golden boy. And if you wanted to make this silver, is as easy as just changing the color, right? So if we go to the to the Oscar's body color, that Oscar gold. Here you go. So if you go to the gold one, let's say I want it now copper. You can just go around to reds, to some red color here. You can make copper. Or you can desaturate it and make it silver, right? We have a silver now. So all the fun stuff. And uh, let me turn on the other SIDs here. So we have Oscar SID. We have hospital SID, we have construction worker SID, and we have uh, everyday SID right here. Felipe, how's it going? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's our color SID. Again, like because this file here was made with love, it's very easy for me to change stuff and and be able to. Um, just have fun with the file and make variations. Okay, so remember this. If you want to gain credits with people in your life, just think about the next person in line that's going to come and have to work on your model. Okay. There's a synth gang here. And then we have our superhero Sid on the front. We have a lovebird Sid uh, having fun with the the Sid toy bot right here. And then we have our action pose Sid back there. Like, you all stupid, let's go to action. That's how he talks, you know. Yep. <laughs> So that's that's the collection for now. Like I said, you know, I'm gonna think about what kind of image I'm gonna make with him and what kind of colors I wanna test it out. So next Sunday I'll probably show you all like the final image 
for it. If you have any suggestion, put on the chat um, for anything. But I might just do like images of each uh, Sid pose and stuff. And one thing that is very important that Chris did here beyond the colors and stuff is to give a little bit of story, right? Like we have the serial number, we have the logo for the for the name. If I select this here, we have back here the company name and the little logo again. And all this stuff creates those kind of like tertiary reads. And most important than tertiary reads, it creates story, which is very important. Okay, it makes him feel like he could be in real world and he could be something that was made by some company or something like that. So, um, yeah. Do you guys have any any questions or do you want me to show how to make all the kinds of materials or... Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know, the lighting's pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna change the lighting. It's very good to present a robot, kind of like again, like that kind of like showroom lighting that's very diffuse with a one directional light, which is nice. Um yeah. And I'm going to close uh, Marma um, Substance because I think it's making everything a bit slow. Close it for now. Now we'll know he has heart with seeds without the pose. That is true. That is true. I think I'm going to have to make one pose that he's planting. He's taking his heart. So what Dari is saying, if you were not here when... When I said this, is that a seed, this little circle here, it's actually a container full of seeds of plants that whatever he goes, he can keep planting seeds in the area that those seeds are going to thrive. So this is kind of like what I call his heart as well, because his heart is to help nature so for him this is the job he loves the most to just go around planting seeds everywhere so this little sphere is full of little seeds of different kinds of plants and it's also his heart so i think we need a pose of him planting some seeds from his heart i think i'm gonna do that that way it's a good idea it's gonna show off that that skill that he has uh, again, like the theme of the this month was hero, so I think it's pretty clear he he has a very heroic vibe and friendly hero because he's a nature hero. Um, and we might do a a version of him very rusty and and uh, weathery and things like that. So we have a few good ideas. Let me just put here so I don't forget. We're going to do a rusty version, rust version, and then we're going to do one pose. It's going to plant seeds. Uh, any other ideas that I could try before I show you all like next Sunday? Do you guys have any other fun ideas? It's gonna be a rust version. And then we're gonna do a pose plant. And I might do a proper Oscar version of seed, not just putting just the material, but like with the little. If you were to rip topo seed, is it better for his middle button, for example, to be actually modeled into the body heel, or can you just intersect pieces? You can intersect pieces. Like when you're doing a model for games, you might want to combine things because it's going to work better in the games. But for animation, like, well, you know, like let's say this Taurus piece here, right? So here's his body on the profile, right? And then we have this Taurus piece right here, right? Let me do it in 3D because it's easier to explain. So let's say it like this, right? So we have a Taurus here going like this. 
But right now, my torrent is actually penetrating, right? In the profile here, it's actually going in the shape here. But if you were doing for like production, you would want to cut it and make it sit perfect on top. It doesn't need to be perfect, but again, thinking about the next people that are gonna have to work on this file, like the riggers and animators, whatever you can do to be the cleanest, no penetration models, even if you're sitting on top, it's not model exactly on the model, it's avoid penetration at all costs. You know, That's helpful for people. Yeah, he. I, I think it's gonna be a cool version of him, just like putting seeds around. That's gonna be a good pose. Pretty cool. And um, is that the same with an environment? I think environment they they accept a bit more penetration than with characters. Characters you want it to be very, very, very clean, very organized because the character needs to move so much and do so much right but in an environment sometimes you put a rock on something and that rock is not going to move nothing's going to happen to that rock so if it's penetrating a little bit that's totally fine you know yes what senior said penetration could be problematic problematic for materials like subsurface scatter and transparency as well yes if we were to have a transparent or subsurface material and you have things penetrating, can create a lot of problems. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, I really like an Oscar buy. <laughs> cool. Any other questions? I'm going to let it sit here just so we render it a little bit so we can see what's going on with the model. I'm gonna put everyone in frame here. <laughs> um, one cool thing uh, that is important to mention, you know, it's like, uh, okay, Daria said, Sid worked with kids, maybe teaching about nature, has the decals of hearts and unicorns and handwritten messages. Best, love you. Like kids love him so much like their friend. Well, no, that's a great idea. He could be like, he loves collecting like drawings of that kids does of himself. And he gets in love with it. Yeah, that's a good idea. There's so many things we can do with Sid. I think that he came out pretty good. Like, I want to say he's the greatest design. I'm not an amazing designer. I do just fine, but he came out pretty nice. I mean, if we remember, the main things that we wanted was a hero. It was uh, friendly. It was a nature bot. And uh, he is very loyal, right? So if you get all of this, you can feel that on Sid, right? So, you know, it is the greatest design. No, it's very basic design. But all the important things that we listed for a hero, it's there. So that's. That's what is important, you know. It serves the story. <laughs> Valerix Art said he has to teach them what plants are because in the future all plants are artificial. That's true. That's true. That's true. Sad but true. Yeah. So I think we got it. We got it. What we needed of him, uh, you know. And we had fun. I mean, I did. Uh, it, he's very simple shaped, but you can see that adding like some, some little details here and there. Like, for example, I have this piece, but then I have my little rubber pad. That's an extra layer of contrast, right? An extra layer of taste on things, you know? So always think about where could you add. Also, an important thing here you can notice is like, this is divide on the thirds. Right, so you have one, two, one, two, three, and then I have two thirds of metal or whatever this is, plastic, and then one third of rubber. This is something that is important because sometimes people are like, oh, I'm gonna add the extra detail, and you go right in the center of the shape. 
And again, that is does not create contrast. That is not contrast. So I always think about the rule of thirds, which is you pick a shape, you divide by three, and then you choose one side to be two thirds, one side to be one third. That's what I did here. Julio? All right. Do you guys have any um any questions? I think next week I'm gonna show you all like the last the images, the final images of him. Maybe I'm gonna talk a little bit about if I change the lighting and um then we can uh do something fun afterwards. Cool. I think next week also, if I'm not mistaken, we're gonna have a special guest joining me. Very important special guest. So it is not my husband, unfortunately. He he's a bit on the shy end. But I have a special guest coming up from a very big studio coming to chat with you all. So if you have questions about the animation industry, things like that, save a ton of questions for our special guest for next week. Cool. Um all right. What do we do now? I mean, we could start trying if you want. We could, I don't know if we're going to be able to finish, but we could try to start doing a pose for our seed character, planting seeds. Okay, Daria said, for future streams, I really wish to see the texturing of human character, skin, cloth, and hair. Yep, that is great. I'll keep that in mind, okay? Keep that in mind. Um, so. If you guys don't have questions, I'm going to do, I think, some posing. Maybe we can start trying to pose him with his little seed thing. So every time I'm going to go pose something, I try to actually find reference for it as usual, right? So if I get here, I Google, I'm going to put um, planting seeds. So we can see, maybe I'm gonna put human and think see just so I can see the whole body, just showing the hand. But I'm just gonna look for to see if there's anything that could help me find a nice gesture for the pose. Let's see. It could be funny also if he has his legs spread like a spider. And then I have an idea, kind of like this, like this image here. We could do like this. He has on one hand, he has his little seed ball. And then on the other hand, I'm gonna put like his little fingers holding a little seed to the ground. And then we're gonna have the spider legs supporting the pose, you know. He's going to be tilting forward like this. I think it's going to work. Let's, let's try it. So because I want the spider legs open, I'm going to start from the uh, spider pose. And, uh, well, maybe not. Let's do it from scratch. So, oh, no, but I need the other. Yeah. Let me know. Let me do something here. No, man. Heroes, model, I think this is the version. So I don't want to have to repost too much his legs. So I'm just going to keep it like this. But I will might have to tilt it. Um, this guy here. We don't need those arms, so I'm going to delete it. Duplicate. I'm going to delete these arms here doesn't need it or he, we could use one to plant the seed maybe just one is coming out maybe the arm itself is going to be plenty that could be interesting so in one hand he's going to be holding his heart right so let's see what's going on here in one hand, he's going to be holding his heart. So I'm just going to open his hand here. 
Okay, the pivot point is not, doesn't matter. Gonna open like this. The thing about posing is that you gotta be just uh, release yourself from making things perfect. You gotta test it out. You know? So we're gonna take his heart out. We're gonna place it on his hand where he's gonna be picking some seeds out from it. We can put it right here. And now we can close his fingers holding a little better like this. Like that. All right, so he's holding it. Might have crushed too much here inside the hand. Might have to be a little more out like this. Maybe his whole hand. I'm gonna have to rotate. I don't know yet, but maybe his hand is gonna be more like this so we can actually see the heart on his hand like this. And then what we could do is to rotate. We need to add this to the group now, or else it's gonna be I'm gonna have to keep fixing it all the time. So I'm gonna put inside the arms group, which is where is the arms group? Right here. Put inside here on the hands. This is the hands group, okay? So I'm just gonna add this to the hands group down here. Now if I select hands, I can move with the ball. Great. So maybe this hand is gonna be picking the seed and giving to this hand to plant it, something like that. So let's rotate this hand going down like this to plant something, right? And it's gonna have to be very delicate. Oops, I don't want the torus inside. The torus to stay out. So now we can go here and we're gonna make it. What is a plant that has a big seed? <laughs> so we can. I don't know if there's such thing. We can make this two fingers holding a seed put it on the ground and then maybe this finger here is gonna be where's this anyone knows about plants acorn yeah acorn is good and this this finger is just gonna be it's gonna be doing out of the way I guess so this two fingers are gonna be plenty this figure just out of the way like this so we can i'm just gonna make a shape of anything here but we can we can make an acorn but just gonna get a, a little cube subdivide and that's gonna be the seed make it just a bit bigger so we know what it is later on This maybe so it's plenty, and then this hand. Let's see, this hand is going to be doing this, and uh, maybe this hand's going to hold in a few more seeds in its own hand, so we can put a few here, like this, rotate out like this. And then open a handful of seeds. But he likes to place them one by one with a lot of love. He doesn't just throw a bunch of seeds, you know what I mean? So. And I might open a hole here on his heart just to have so we can see some of the seeds inside. For now, we can just take this seed gonna make a bit smaller and I'm gonna put a few on his hand here 
and he's holding for the mechanical hand to finish planting stuff and give a few more just rotate to stabilize a little more the hand like this a few more one on top here something like that i don't know there's just a block out for a pose so we can play around and we can make him very happy. He's going to have a very happy face, like planting his little seeds and stuff. And uh, I think we need to rotate. Maybe the whole arm. I'm going to rotate down a little more. So it's like this finger is, is almost like balancing on the floor and then he is choosing where he's gonna plant the little seed like that love to see those metal hands be so delicate represent the concept perfectly yeah thank you yeah it could be a pumpkin i can put something else on the hand but i think this one is gonna work well we could have this hand just for a balance a little, like going back a little. Again, like I'm rotating and thinking about um, silhouette, right? If I turn off here, do I understand what's going on? Okay, I understand there's something doing something on the floor. There's a hand doing something here and that's about it. So obviously we got to think about in 3D because we don't know where we're going to put the camera. But I think this angle would be the best angle. So doesn't seem like it's working very well yet. So what I'm going to do is to actually get those seeds. I'm going to add to the hands. So we don't need to reposition all the time. And open it here. Just going to get all those things and put inside the hands. Is, it, is this the hands group? No. I think it's this group. Let me see. What the hell did I put? No, I put in the wrong group. One second. It's up here. All right. Now it's going to work. All right. So it's all together, right? So let's think about it. If this is our main angle. Okay. So what I'm going to do is make sure that we have a nice silhouette read. And maybe I can make the hands go down a little more like this. Just trying to think what is it that's going to make it read better, right? Open like this. Starting to read a little more. This rotation is kind of weird. Breaking his arm, I don't like it. This. And maybe this arm, I push it down, but maybe it should be forward. Or let's think. I mean, it's not like everything is to be readable, but if it was something like this, could be cool. Let's check it out, our silhouette here. Yeah, so you can see the ball, you can see the hands here. You can see this hand doing something. And uh, so this finger is just like, I like the idea of this finger is like balancing on the floor so he could kind of tilt his hand perfectly like on the spot here on the floor to plant his little thingy. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. We could try to export this and see what happens. I'm just going to fix this edge here. Because it's penetrating a little. So I'll move this up a bit. Okay. Nice. It's kind of like this. Um, okay. Let's export and see. We're going to put some textures in. I think we have time. So it's not perfect, obviously. But, um, you know, one thing we could try to do is to... is doing that. So... Maybe we can rotate this leg out even a bit more to create more room here. 
And the back leg is something we got to think about uh, on the pose, because right now it's kind of hidden. So we can choose to rotate even more to the side like this, or we can rotate like that to create some more overlap. Or we can keep in the back. I mean, it's going to rotate out a bit more like this. I don't care. Okay. I'm going to keep it there. All right. So now I'm just going to select all of this. And I'm going to call it uh, something else. I'm going to put Sid. Action, no, Sid uh, plant, plant group. Right now we're going to export to our file. Marmoset. And I'm going to call Sid plant. Spurt. It's gonna do its thing. And now we can go here. And we're going to I'm gonna hide some of the sid here because it's a party. And hide some some sids. And hide this pose. And hide everyone. Skip this two here. And now I can import model. Oops. Marmoset, Sid Plant, open. All right. And now let's put this one on the side here and test it out. So this is a seed right here. Because the names of uh, the geometry in my eye is the same for all the models, when I bring it in, it already knows how to use all the materials, you know? So where's the the seed here though? We had it one here, right? Maybe I didn't copy. So no problem. Can just duplicate here and give a little seed again. Okay, it's not as easy to position things here. Let me turn up full quality. It goes a bit faster, you see, because it's not trying to calculate lighting and stuff. Okay, so here's our seed. Put it here. There you go. Move it down just a smidge. So now he's planting, and we can put a happy face on him, like he's very happy about. This is actually his favorite job. He's just um, planting seeds. So um, this one is the part. Where is the happy one? Here you go. I'm gonna put on his head here. Boop! Yay! Now he's happy, and he's planting some seeds. And obviously, I need to paint black here or something to look like there is a cavity where his heart was, you know, because right now it's just the color. I didn't plan to it, but I'll probably paint it black or something to look like it's going in. And then we have seed planting things. <laughs> he's a happy bot. When he's happy, his hair could spread out a bit. Very happy, so. Oh, that's that. <laughs> we didn't do much on the pose. We, we could do a bit more, but, you know, just for now, he kind of gets the job done. And uh, that's it. I think we're almost out of time. Do you guys have any final questions? Just a reminder, next week, we have a special guest to come talk about animation industry. This guest is very uh, special to me. It's not my husband, but it is also special. And um, he has experience with many things, modeling, texturing, and, and even uh, hand drawing, animation, and things like that. So yeah, you're gonna know who's gonna be soon. <laughs> yep. And uh, it's going to be awesome. And then I'm uh, going to have the final image of, of a bot seed for you all to see. 
And that's about it. So don't miss it. <laughs> no one's here. Hi, no one. <laughs> Who is it? I don't know. If you don't know Noman, I definitely don't know who it is. <laughs> uh, did it work with you on Sea Beast? No, it did not work with me on Sea Beast. Okay. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys. I was going to keep it as a surprise, but I don't like to have to wait. So I'll just show this person's um our station here. Let me open. Okay. So our next guest, it's going to be the one and only Caleb Rice, okay? So I'm going to introduce him better next week, but Caleb works at Pixar Studio, and he is a artist at Pixar. He does 2D and 3D. He is what we like to call a bastard that does it all. So he does 2D and 3D, okay? And I had the pleasure to... Uh, work with Caleb at DreamWorks when I my time at DreamWorks and then I I left DreamWorks to go to Netflix and he left to go to Pixar and now I'm at Disney and uh, Caleb is just not just one of my favorite artists in the whole world but also one of my favorite people in the whole world he is so sweet and nice and we're going to talk a lot of cool things about 3D which is going to be awesome so if you're interested, check out his output here, his art station, if you want to take a look. Think about questions about uh, Caleb. He's going to talk a little bit about his career. And think about what kind of questions you want to ask. He doesn't have 2D work here, but he is a 2D artist at Pixar as well. He does concept art at Pixar. If you look at here, let's a light year, right? Light year. A lot of the uh, this character from Buzz Lightyear, he did all the 2D concepts and he also did the 3D model and he also did the final model for the movie, which is crazy to me. So let me get some images here. Uh, yeah, you can see here some of his uh, VizDev model sculpts for Buzz Lightyear. It's here. And this is all, again, like viz dev work. And, but he also made the production models, which is crazy. But for this character is the, the one that pisses me off because he did the 2D concepts, he did the model, he did the production model. So it's all him. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So get ready because Caleb's going to come. And if you have any questions about... Stuff, don't ask many questions about Pixar specifically. We cannot talk too much about the place we work, but you can ask any kind of questions about his career, where he go to school, how, what is his routine to study, or whatever, all those good questions, okay? Um, he's an outstanding artist. I follow him on Instagram. He puts on banger after banger. That is very true. And he's a beautiful person, he's a beautiful human being, one of my best friends, like I said, in my whole life. Um, so, yeah, but I like to call him bastard because he's so good on everything. So, you know, when he's here, you're going to see me call him two things, bastard and Caleb's, because I like to call him Caleb's. Here are some of the buzz uh, models we did. So good, so good. So. Please join. Uh, uh, we probably meet Noma and I. We're gonna put some announcements saying that Caleb is gonna come to to do a talk, and then um, yeah. So you all don't forget for next Sunday, okay? This coming Sunday, and that's about it. This is all the time we had for today. I think you all have fun doing our little hero. And uh, like I said, before, uh, when Caleb gets here next week, I'm just going to show it very fast, the images we made of Sid, and then we go for our interview part of the show with Caleb. Awesome. All right, everyone. That's about it for today. Drink lots of water. And remember, little increments time of study. You don't need to study a whole day. That creates burnout. So go little increments, set aside one hour, two hours, 
and try to be consistent throughout your week to get some study done, okay? All right. Yeah, of course. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Daria, Jay, Senor, Opera, Dracula, all the good ones. Felipe, my husband. All right. Now I'm going to play that cool um, uh, Nomen video, and then we'll see you all next, next Sunday. Bye.